अडचणी त्या तलमून ती सांगायला लागली ती सहज गुडमॉर्निंग काकडे सर हॅलो हॅलो गुड मॉर्निंग सर गुड मॉर्निंग सर व्हेरी गुड मॉर्निंग मॉर्निंग गुड मॉर्निंग लेट नाही झालं ना आमच्याकडं दोन मिनिटात करतोय सुरू सर ओके सर विल वेट सर फॉर फाइव मिनिट सर ओके सर नो प्रॉब्लम आवाज क्लियर येतोय सर हा सर क्लिअर येतोय ओके 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 गुड मॉर्निंग गोसले सर मॉर्निंग गोस कस छान बस छान तुम्ही बर हो व्यवस्थित व्यवस्थित गुड मॉर्निंग किदल सर युअर वॉइस इज नॉट कमिंग युअर माइक इज म्यूट किदल सर सर युअर माइक इज म्यूट येस ओके बोलिए within 5 minutes we will start our meeting yes okay
नो प्रॉब्लम एट ऑल ओके 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 ठाकरे सर हाँ यस हाँ विल स्टार्ट नाउ यस 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 स्टार्ट स्टार्ट बिना डॉक्टर भोसले सर प्लीज हाँ सर विल स्टार्ट नाउ सर यस सर यस नो आई एम आई थैंक यू गुड मॉर्निंग टू वन एंड ऑल टुडे एम एस मंडल्स आर कॉमर्स एंड साइंस कॉलेज किले दारू डिस्ट्रिक्ट बी डिपार्टमेंट ऑफ केमिस्ट्री इज गोइंग टू ऑर्गेनाइज नेशनल वेबिनार ऑन फ्यूचर ऑफ द केमिकल साइंसेस एंड रिसर्च आई टेक दिस अपॉर्चुनिटी टू वेलकम ऑनरेबल श्री प्रकाश दादा सोलंके साहेब एम एल एक्स मिनिस्टर महाराष्ट्र स्टेट एंड प्रेसिडेंट ऑफ मराठवाड़ा शिक्षण प्रसारक मंडल औरंगाबाद ऑनरेबल श्री सतीश भाऊ चौहान साहेब एम एल सी एंड सेक्रेटरी ऑफ एम एस सी मंडल औरंगाबाद ऑल एग्जीक्यूटिव मेंबर्स ऑफ मराठवाड़ा शिक्षण प्रसारक मंडल औरंगाबाद ऑनरेबल श्री जयसिंह भैया सोलंके ऑनरेबल श्री लोभाजी चौहान ऑनरेबल श्री अजय सिंह दिक्कत ऑनरेबल श्री इंद्रजीत जाधव सर ऑनरेबल डॉक्टर राम सिंगारे सर आई वेलकम ऑन दिस ऑकेजन ऑन बिहाफ ऑफ एम एस सी मंडल्स आर्ट कॉमर्स एंड साइंस कॉलेज किलेदार रोड आई ऑल्सो वेलकम टू द प्रेसिडेंट ऑफ दिस वेबिनार आवर बिलीव प्रिंसिपल डॉक्टर गोपाल काकड़े सर आई ऑल्सो वेलकम टूडेज वेबिनार इनॉग्रेटर प्रोफेसर डॉक्टर सिद्धनाथ भोसले सर सीनियर प्रिंसिपल साइंटिस्ट सी एस आई आर आई आई सी टी हैदराबाद आई ऑल्सो वेलकम टू प्रोफेसर डॉक्टर किशोर कुमार होत सर डिपार्टमेंट ऑफ केमिस्ट्री शिवाजी यूनिवर्सिटी कोलहापुर आई वंस अगेन वेलकम टू बोथ ऑफ दिस इनाग्रेटर एंड रिसोर्स पर्सन फ्रॉम माई बॉटम हाउ बॉटम ऑफ हर्ट I also welcome to our vice principal M. A. Jogde sir and all the participants who have joined to this webinar from various parts of the country. I once again welcome to you one and all. Today we have organized national webinar on future of the chemical science and research. As a convener, I will bring a webinar. This webinar is organized. Chemical science plays a significant role in the development of the country. Challenges in health, energy, and climate change, water. and food production are resolved by the chemical sciences by using the various advanced equipment has also a great importance in the biochemistry and pharmaceutical industry the issues raised in the environmental changes are resolved by the development of the chemical sciences chemical sciences provide the understanding chemical properties and a new molecular structure with use of various applications the nanotechnology has made advanced change and revolution in the world with the help of chemical sciences during covid 19 period the lives of millions of the peoples are saved due to the applications of chemical sciences by innovation in the various vaccines okay. huh. our day start with the chemical sciences and it finishes 
with the use of yes. chemical sciences. There is no single sector in the world without use of chemical sciences. Major sectors like pharmaceutical, chemical industries, paints, colors, agriculture, construction, leather industries, food industries. Apart from these, other sectors are where there is the wide use of chemical sciences. Recent advanced technologies in the research methodologies are making vast revolution in the chemical sciences. Lastly, I expect there will be the fruitful discussion in the webinar, which will be beneficial to the budding researchers and also to the society. With this brief introduction, I conclude my introductory word regarding this webinar. Now, I request Professor Dr. Siddhanath Bosle sir to inaugurate and deliver an inauguratory speech regarding this webinar. Before to start your lecture, I would like to introduce Dr. Siddhanath Bosle sir. He is a senior principal scientist, polymer and functional material division, CSIR, Indian Institute of Chemical Technology, Hyderabad, Telangana State. He has completed his PhD degree in supramolecular chemistry, Freie University, Berlin, Germany, under the supervision of Professor J.F. Pruhoff. He has completed his postdoctoral study in 2006-07 in University of Geneva, Switzerland. He has nine years teaching experience. He has completed his PhD degree. Under his PhD degree, 15 Students, they have awarded their PhD degree under his able guidance. One has submitted his thesis and three students are working under his able guidance. Dr. Siddhanath Bosleser has published 170 papers in various national and international refereed journals. He has published 10 book chapters and there is a one chapter on, on his account in Encyclopedia. He has completed three major research projects by acting as a principal investigator. His specialization is organic and bioorganic molecular chemistry, organic fundamental materials, and supramolecular supramolecular polymers with this brief introduction i request dr anath bosle sir to deliver his talk on this occasion and his title of the talk is helical assemblies of small molecules and polymers please preside over dr siddhanath bosle sir Call the participant to unmute their mic. Please unmute your mic. The slides are visible, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. I would like to thank the organizing committee for inviting me for this national webinar. With the permission of chairman, convener, and co-convener, I declare this webinar is open for discussion. Okay, the topic which I got for this webinar is future of the chemical sciences and research. Before going directly to my talk, 
I would like to discuss a little bit for students as well as my teacher colleagues about researchers or the scientists who in this field and also working. First, I would like to thank Dr. D. Sinvas Reddy, Director, CSI IICT Hyderabad. Dr. Gopal K. Kakade, Principal, ACS College, Kille Dahu, President of this webinar. I would like to thank my head, Dr. Rohit Kumarana, Polymers and Fashion Division, CSI IICT Hyderabad. I would like to thank my friend, Dr. So, the hag egg gram activated charcoal. Hai. So, Kitty sulfur dioxide added charcoal? Kitty? Kitty? And a methane, a city of the participants are requested hydrogen, but just the code answer of killer sulfur dioxide, just the answer of them. Okay, I would like to thank my friend Dr. Millennium Gaikwad, assistant professor and co convener of this webinar from Department of Chemistry, ACS College, Kille Dal. Here, I would like to quote from Honorable Sri Narendra Modi, President, CSIR, vision and mission to make Bharat as developed a country in 2047. He is the president of CSIR and under Council of Scientific and Industrial Research, there are 37 laboratories network in our country. And one of the those laboratories, CSIR, Indian Institute of Chemical Technology, Hyderabad, and it was established in 1944. Our institute gives opportunity for doing PhD as well as we serve for industries. In our institutes, we have the PhD program in different uh, sciences, that is chemical sciences, biological sciences, engineering sciences, physical sciences. Most of work goes on organic chemistry, traditional chemistry, genetical chemistry, inorganic biology, chemical engineering. And those who qualified CSR, UGC, JRF, as well as DHT inspired fellows or ICMR, DBT fellows, those can get admission in our PhD program. And we are conducting also coursework from, for them during their PhD program. Here we give extensive training for their synthetic work as well as instrumentation handling in our PhD program. That's why I would like to invite those who are interested to join our institute. We have 160 scientists actively working in our institute and 20 more scientists are going to join within next couple of months. Hmm. Now, before joining institute, students th thought, uh, students always thinking whether I can get Jax or Angie came. It is not like this in research. If we look this professor, Professor Jyoti Chattopadhyay. He is the emeritus professor at Department of Cell and Molecular Biology, University of Upasla. He did his PhD from NCL. At the beginning of his research career or during his PhD, he published his work in Indian Journal of Chemistry, Tetrahedon Letters, as well as Annual Conversion of Chemistry, Indian Journal of Chemistry, Indian Journal of Chemistry, again in 1975, Indian Journal of Chemistry. That means the person who begin with Indian Journal now he published several papers in Jacks and Angie Kames. That's why I would like to request those PhD aspirants who want to join CSIR. Before joining, don't think about publication and all those things. First, you think about to get good training for you are doing for doing research. Now, question arises whether only Indians are publishing in Indian Journal and foreigners are not. Publishing in their their papers in Indian Journal. This is my supervisor, Professor Jurgen Hinrich Pro of the University of Berlin, under whom I did my PhD. He publishes one paper in Bulletin of Material Sciences, which is published by Indian Academy of Sciences in 1999. That means we always afraid to publish our work in Indian Journal, but one can go and publish in Indian Journal. It also recognized by the scientific community. Now, look this professor, Professor Sienara Bharat Ratna. At, this photo was taken at his age, that means 85 years, and it was at 5th of August 2019 in CSRI City. At that time, he, he was 85, now he goes on 89. And still he is publishing 25 papers each year. We have to inspire from this guy or this professor because at the age of 50, now I am seeing when I am going to go in going to retire. It is not like this. If we love our work, 
then we never think about retirement. We have to publish, we have to, uh, that means do research continuously. It is not a one day job. This is the photograph of young Professor Shiena Rao at BHU. And this is his book. One can take this book and read his thorough life in chemistry. I would like to talk about one moment. I would like to talk about this professor, Nadrin Seaman, who is widely credited with being a first person to recognize that DNA can be used to design building programmer nanostructures and nanomachines. That means whenever we get frustration during research, I always keep his example in mind because when he was frustrated, he went to his campus program. That means he was taking his coffee and he was too much frustrated uh, in his research and he was not getting good idea. He was thinking like this. At that time, he looked to the woodcuts, which was made by this MC Isher, who was a graphic artist and who made these woodcuts from mathematical inspired design. That means this woodcutting in that pub is made by this uh, <laughs> and by looking that woodcutting, this professor Nathan Simon, he got idea, why not we make DNA like this architecture? And for his idea, he made DNA nanotechnology. That means the, this field comes from the pub campus, or one can say from his uh, canteen. When he was taking his cup, cup of coffee, at that time, he got this idea. And after getting his idea in 1980, he was able to complete, uh, he was demonstrated the three-dimensional DNA crystals in 2009. That means he started in 1980, this idea, near about 30 years it took to complete his idea or to have this idea of demonstrating his idea. That means research is not a one-day job. We always think today we make one reaction, tomorrow we can get jacks. Or today we make one reaction, tomorrow we should get angry committees. Uh -huh. like this, if we have ideas and if we go, go longer way and do con constantly, continuously research in that field, then one can get such great uh -huh. achievement. Now look this, our ex-president, Bharat Ratna, Dr. APJ Abdul Kalam, what he says, always student cries that I don't have facilities, I don't have support and all these things. His one statement is very nice, look at the sky, we are not alone. The whole universe is friendly to us and conspires only to give the best to those who dream and work. Students who don't, who want to dream and who want to do honest hard work, at that time, each teacher, each society person can come and support you. That's why don't cry that I'm not getting support like this because if you are the honest hard worker, your teachers uh, is, uh, give your peace also from their own pockets like this, it happens. That's why I always be positive and work for research. Now, those teachers who want to succeed in academia, look this book, one can get uh, online, one can get this PDF file and go for this success in academia. Or one can read this, how to survive and excel as an academician in India, Biman Bakshi in 2000, sorry, 2021 in current science. He published at first this article and then he published this book and one can get this as a PDF file online. That means students as well as teachers, as well as we scientists, we have to be positive, work hard and honestly, then we can get support constantly. Now come to this topic, which is of chemical sciences and research. If this topic is easy to explain, I feel it is very difficult to say about the future of chemical sciences and research because chemical sciences is not only just one word, it has different type of uh, different type of disciplines <laughs> that is chemical sciences. And those are, if we take synthetic chemistry, then synthetic chemistry, mechanical chemistry for synthesis, photochemistry for synthesis, electrochemistry for synthesis, enzyme in organic synthesis, as well as combinatorial chemistry in synthesis, flow chemistry in synthesis. That means in synthesis itself, we have several, again, sub-themes, that means to explain this topic, it is very difficult. Then also, I would like to quote some great scientist words about this future of chemistry and research. Chemistry is a very old discipline. Modern chemistry began to emerge from alchemy in the 17th and 18th century. 
in recent decades research in chemistry is interdisciplinary as well as multidisciplinary also look this is the synthesis chemist here synthesizing our future for synthetic chemistry in future how it works professor reji noeli from japan he talk about this one he tells chemical synthesis has now has now reached an extraordinary level of sophistication but there is a vast room for improvement but he says again he emphasizes on the development of synthesis process must be economical safe resource efficient energy efficient and economically winning that means though we reached as a sophisticated level again there is a room to improve in synthetic methods he says the scientific world should be borderless just now the guy was told about corona virus and how people or researcher emerges to give a vaccine or to make a vaccine and distribute to the world here what this professor says noeli the scientific world should be borderless scientists from both and advanced emerging nations must cooperate for the survival of our species within the confines of our planet if this corona hits each and every person on this planet then our survival on this planet is very really difficult due to this borderless scientific efforts by the scientists professors and researchers or industrialists make our species to be alive on this planet that's why this is the greatest challenge facing chemists in co conducting research and again there is a lot of room for improvement in chemical synthesis if we look this is again fuel cell and here powering the planet with solar fuel that means how solar cell fuel or solar fuel cells professor has it be way he talk about this one one of the grand challenge of 21st century chemistry is to convert abundant energy poor molecule to energy rich molecule using sunlight as the energy source this is the challenge for 21st century what he emphasizes on the replacement of fossil fuels with solar fuels such as hydrogen from water or methanol or from water and carbon dioxide that means one has a challenge or we have a challenge to make economically feasible hydrogen production from water or methylene methanol from water and carbon dioxide to have a fuel then what his vision was what he says in the future we will be able to put three components of our atmosphere we are producing lot of carbon dioxide each and every moment what he says in future we are able to make this use of these gases carbon dioxide nitrogen and oxygen along with sea water and to make not only fuels electricity pure water but polymers food and almost everything else we need that means water gases we emitted in the environment that again we have to reuse in future and make our food all also the needed things for our future life this is his vision and this is the century of human history we will start paying back with the capital generated through fundamental research in chemistry now comes again in future we need the scientific tools which are very essential for our chemistry development and here recently it was proposed a new channel ion detector for mass spectroscopy of ion mobility spectrometry development of new instruments and techniques likely to influence future advances in chemistry and chemistry goes green most of the college teachers professors they are working in this field and they are using today's waste material it should become tomorrow's resources and it starts in 1990 90s and it is a method alternative to the hazardous chemical process and this new century will be gradual transfer from a petroleum based chemistry to a chemistry based on wide diversity of field stock and most of teachers i think they are working in this field that means chemistry goes green they are developing new catalyst new environmentally friendly methods for organic synthesis and it will be the also future of chemistry now i would like to come to my talk research is more than a job it's human imperative that means our need and it inspires or it comes from our heart and it is a not a job that means we are coming to the office at 9 and going at 5:30 that means not a research it is a 24 hour process in our mind as well as in laboratory now i would like to talk about helical assemblies of small molecules and polymers here 
we know that to make a covalent bond, we have to give some energy or to break a covalent bond, we need some energy. I, the energy needed for formation of covalent bond as well as breaking of covalent bond is about 10 raised to 2 to 10 raised to 4 kilojoule per mole. But if we go for non-covalent interactions and if we make a system with non-covalent interactions to form that bond or to break that bond, the energy needed is very less, that is 0 0.1 to 10 kilojoule per mole. What are those non-covalent interactions? Electrostatic interaction, dipole-dipole interaction, dipole-ion interaction, coordinate bonding, Van der Waals interaction, pi pi interactions, and hydrogen bonding. These are the non-covalent interactions which plays an important role to form a supramolecular assemblies. And here, the energy needed for charge-charge interaction is about 13 to 17 kilojoule in water, kilojoule per mole in water. Hydrogen bonding, that means non-covalent interaction or non-covalent hydrogen bonding, it requires 2 to 21 kilojoule per mole energy. Whereas Van der Waals interaction, it needs 0 0.4 to 0 0.8 kilojoule per mole energy. That means Van der Waals interactions are uh, less attractive as compared to charge and hydrogen bonding interactions. Now, if we look in nature, this protein, as well as DNA, these molecules, it contains, again, non-covalent interaction. Here, the nucleic bases which are present in this DNA, they interact with hydrogen bonding. Whereas in this protein, the amino acids in the form of peptide, it forms amide hydrogen bonding and gives this non-covalent interaction makes stability to the protein. Now question is, is, is it possible to mimic natural helical system in laboratory? Efforts, chemists have made noble efforts to make this artificial helical assembly or molecules to make a helical aggregates from small molecules to self-assembly. That means, in nature, these non-covalent interactions are present, and these macromolecules or biomacromolecules are made via non-covalent interactions. A non-covalent interaction plays an important role to form such type of uh, uh, macromolecules in nature. And whether we can make such artificial helical molecules in laboratory, answer is yes. Researchers or chemists, they are giving their good efforts or have made a lot of efforts to make or mimic the natural system. And purpose, what, are, what was the purpose or what is the purpose of chemist? Just to mimic the structure of biological helices, this is the first purpose. And then such helical assembly, is it functional or is it possible to make it functional and some functions related to them? Achievement, what chemists or what professor, scientists, they achieved in this field, the, Chemists developed synthetic helical systems that demonstrate unique chiral phenomena on properties and specific functions. That means scientists or researchers, they are able to make helical systems in laboratory, like natural systems, and they made it should give some functions. And some of them, the functions of the natural artificial systems, which make such type of helical assembly, it gives some properties which are also not found in natural systems. Now, I already told hydrogen bonding, pi pi aromatic stacking, ion dipolar interaction, charge electrostatic interaction, solophobic interactions, and metal ion complexes. These are involved to make supramolecular helical architectures construction. The first example was found in literature in 1945. The first example of helical assemblies was put forth by this professor, Whitcam, and it was published in JAX. What he did, he used this. Uh, amplified molecule with carboxylic head groups and it has a long alkyl chain with secondary butyl group at one end and he found that it makes 100 twisted assembly from its dispersal solution. But he didn't uh, con conclude whether it is right-handed or left-handed. Again, further, Horton and Gritschall, what they do, did, they used a lithium 12 hydroxy steroid. That means this is a, again, amplified with lithium salt, and they again got the helical assembly. But again, they are not able to mention which type of handedness this helix makes. But Kambala from Japan in 1965, he used the same MP file with this lithium as a salt. That meant here, OH is the hydroxy group at this chiral center. And he found that, or they found that this molecule with this D-chiral center, it used right-handed twist. That means if you look 
this is twisted one and this twist is right handed but when they use this as a real form they found this gives the left handed twist that means the d form it use right handed helical assembly whereas l form it gives left handed helical assembly but what happens when they use this d and l they mix up these two amplifiers together and they found that it makes resimate or it gives the resimic form and it does not show any helicity in the obtained nanostructure it is like just platelet morphology or ribbon like morphology without any helical form now if we look these three molecules this is again glutamic acid derivative with long chain and here head group is cationic that means it is also water soluble in another case these groups what they did, did kunit k and it all they made this another amplifier with this glutamic acid now it is the anionic head group and again it is water soluble and they use this amplifier it has zeta ion as a head group that means negatively phosphonate and this positive phosphonate that means they tried to make mimic from the nature and they found that the compound 2 and compound 3 having this chiral center it gives helical assembly and they published this in again jax as well as so the chemistry letters now in this molecule we saw here cationic head group anionic head group and again the zeta ionic head group that means these head groups make this molecule as a water soluble and it self assembles and due to these chiral centers it gives helically self assembled material now question arises if the head group is not water soluble uh, sorry head group is water soluble but not a cationic anionic as well as zeta ionic whether it gives helical assembly and for up it all my professor they demonstrated that such molecule having long chain with this amide hydrogen amide bond here which undergoes intermolecular hydrogen bonding it forms such helical assembly that and they demonstrated it by using computational method and they found that it makes such type of quadruple hydrogen bonding as well as such type of helical system that means this row row does not contain a single molecular assembly it first makes such type of self assembled single loop and they again undergo self assembly giving such type of helical assembly now this is a bolamphipyl molecule that means in this these two cases we found amphipyls it gives self assembled material or helical material and this is a bolamphipyl molecule here bolamphipyl means what the molecule which contains here alkyl chain or aromatic Uh, core with water soluble head groups is called as bolamphipyl as well as when molecule having a hydrophobic edge as well, and here is the hydrophilic edge with water soluble head groups it is also called as a bolamphipyl this terminology brought in literature from by my professor professor prop this is the natural bolamphipyl or the bolamphipyl which is used by or uh, used by south american people to trap the animal and this is the photograph which i took in my our laboratory this is the bolamphipyl molecule it has alkyl chain again here is amide functional group amide functional group and this is a water soluble head group here this amide functional group it undergoes hydrogen bonding again this hydrogen undergoes hydrogen bonding and n is equal to 12 that means even number of uh, carbon chain and it is the hydrophilic head groups it makes again a fibers are right handed fibers in the water that means though this molecule does not contain any cationic anionic as zeta-ionic head group but it is water soluble and it makes again the self assembly now this is again gemini amphipyl if we look this molecule gemini amphipyl it does not contain any chiral centers this is a long chain c16s33 again c16s33 this is the long chain and here two cationic uh, head groups are present and this is the counter ion that is again x is tata red what they found when this tata red is recipic one that means l as well as d tata red they added then this molecule it gives such flat like uh, sheet or this type of a sheet like structure but when they added the tata red acid or this counter ion is l tata red acid and it is about 50% they found that it makes a step of helical assembly that means the this counter ion tartaric acid it introduces 
the helicity in this amplifier and it gives such type of helical assembly. When they increased the concentration of tartaric acid, real tartaric acid to the 100%, this helicity, it goes like this. That means this pitch is again the Titan one. And here, more EE tartaric ion forms such type of helical assembly. But in presence of L and D, mixture of L and D tartaric, it gives sheet like structure. Now, not only this one, the, when the molecule contains alkyl chain without any carbon, uh, chiral carbon, then also it gives the chiral self assembly. If we look this molecule 9A, here again this amide functional group, R is this alkyl chain with chiral center. Again, 9B, R is again this alkyl chain with this chiral center. And 9C, R is there is no chiral center. Then these researchers found that though this compound does not contain, when it is 9C, does not contain any chiral center, then also it makes this type of assembly or helical assembly. But they didn't found whether it is L or D or M helix or P helix. That means hydrogen bonding of this, it makes a type of chiral assembled material. Now, if we look this molecule, it has long chain, aromatic, Coal, as well as here at O, R, R is substituent with chiral alkyl chains. And here again, these, these two are the different one. Here, they introduced the two nitrogen with hydrogen. That means hydrogen donating groups and nitrogen, oxygen, hydrogen accepting group. They found that this molecule in water, uh, it forms at first dimer at high temperature. Again, it undergoes disorder aggregate, further disordered nucleus, and then helical nucleus, and it makes such type of helical assembly. That means such molecules, formation of dimer, and then use the helical assembly. If we raise the temperature of this helical assembly, they found that it again comes back and it becomes a monomolecular structure. That means here, temperature plays an important role to have a helical assembly for this molecule. Again, this molecule, this is naphthalene diamide. It, these Sanders et al, or Sanders and co-workers, what they did, they put cysteine or modified cysteine in this, and they found that this molecule, it undergoes hydrogen bonding, again, pi pi stacking, and gives such type of nanotube. This is a model, or uh, this is dash, right? This is again, the model having a, a stick model. Here, one can see, hydrogen bonding are present and such nanotubes they use to trap the C60 molecule in this nanotube. That means simple one molecule, it can make a nanotube via hydrogen bonding as well as pi pi stacking and gives such type of nanotube and one can use it as a functional nanotube to trap the C60 molecule and one can go for further study that is energy transfer as well as uh, charge transfer. Now, if we look this molecule here in this case, this is again metal. That means in previous case, we saw that hydrogen bonding makes this molecule to have a helical assembly. In this molecule, metal coordination with this molecule, it gives also helical assembly and it adopts the helical uh, assembly. In second case, if we look this bent molecule, in this bent molecule, there is nitrogen or 3D nitrogen are present. This is again alkyl chain with these chiral centers and it makes system should be soluble in water. When they added Ag in this molecule, then this Ag binds with these nitrogens and it forms such type of dimer. And this dimer undergoes self-assembly, giving such type of nan nanotubular structure or such type of fibers. And when they added fluoride in this system, they found that this fluoride makes salt with Ag and it goes reverse and make a sheet-like structure because this Ag goes away from these nitrogens and make AgF and here such so sheet like structure. That means one can go forward to make assembly or chiral assembly. And again, one can achieve the monomolecular structures by going back from the chiral assembly. If we look this molecule here, in this case, there is no hydrogen bonding is present. That means no amide bond is present, no cationic center is present, no ionic center is present, and it has an aromatic core. When this molecule undergoes self assembly, they found that such type of stacks happens. That means this is a pipe pi stacking takes place. And here, such type of stacks use the, sorry, use the nano structures with the helical stacks. In this case, again, this is an aromatic 
and here well, all is again this alkyl chain with the chiral centers and this is the polar molecule that is cn in a dipolar aggregates it gives such type of molecular stacking and gives the fiber formation this fiber again undergoes further process that means further aggregation and it gives a type of rope type aggregates that means a simple simple molecule with these chiral alkyl chains it undergoes though it does not contain any cationic anionic deuteronic head groups it undergoes self assembly via pipe stacking and gives such type of nano molecular structures in this case if we look this molecule again here this is the core with aromatic and this is oeg chain which is solubilizes this molecule in water it contains these carbon atoms with the chiral centers they found that this molecule it gives such type of helical assembly at first it makes such type of dimer and then it stacks here like this, and it makes helical assembly and finally one can get such type of nanomolecular nano helical nanostructures with simple molecules now if we look this macromolecular nucleic base with this long chain here this molecule at beginning what it happens it use bilayer vesicles but the same molecule after 10 hours it undergoes self assembly and use such type of chiral center chiral molecular structures and further for long if we put this system for longer time then they found that it gives such type of again nanostructure that means one can makes a different type of nanostructures from simple molecule depending on the time at the previous case we saw by changing the temperature one can change the assembly of the molecule here by changing the temperature sorry by changing the time one can make change in assembly formation and here again one can say this chiral center it introduces chirality in this molecule as well as here also and this nh2 undergoes hydrogen bonding if we look this molecule again macro molecule thalocyanin with crown ethers and here again the substituents alkyl chain at beginning this molecule it forms such type of stacking and then this stacks further undergoes aggregation and it makes such type of right handed helix that means here if we look it goes right handed and then such right handed helical stacks stacks with or interacts with another helical material similar material and then it makes such type of bonding here and stacking and again finally it gives the left handed stacks that means we started with simple molecule it undergoes stacking it converted into the right handed helical stacks which further undergoes again stacking that means helical rods and it makes super coiled structures and they proved by the tm that means simple molecule and formation of two types of helical stacks left handed as well as right handed if we look again this is a bolamphipyl molecule here this bolamphipyl molecule has thymine at this end and then what these people simatsu from japan what they did they use oligo deoxy denylic acid that means 20 mol this uh, dna strand and single dna strand and they combined with this one or they made 62 plus 63 assembly and they found that this adenine we know that adenine interacts with thymine and it makes hydrogen bonding like this here and it gives again the helical self assembly that means simple bolamphipyl in presence of this dna oligomer it forms such type of helical assembly and here if we look hydrogen bonding plays an important role to form such type of helical assembly as well as pi pi stacking here this inner core with this aromatic it undergoes pi pi stacking and gives the hydrogen bonding now is it possible to make helical assembly without containing any chiral center in the molecule if we look this 396 molecule that means this monomer it does not contain any chiral center here what happens in this molecule uh, when this molecule undergoes polymerization these people they put this ligand with chiral ligand that means here l is chiral or spartinin here and this chiral ligand when they use it to make polymer of this compound then polymerization happens and in this polymer they found that chirality was induced that means one can use catalyst to induce the chirality in the polymer and they found this is the opti optically active helical polymer 
Now, if we look this molecule, of, this is a optically active. It has a chiral center. In second molecule, if we look, there is no chiral center. When these people, they make polymer of this molecule, macrophose 05 and macrophose 06, that means by using these monomers, when they made the polymer or the cross-link polymer, they found that this, the polymer which they obtained, it has a chiral. That means the one optically active monomer, it induces chirality in the polymer. And here, this chirality is up to 70 bond length. That means induction of chirality happens in the polymer by using optically active monomer. If we look this molecule, again, this is a chiral, but in presence of cation, that means lithium, uh, sodium, and Ag plus mono cationic, uh, this metals here in presence of this metal or m plus it it was found that this m positive it interacts with this oxygen at the same time cation pi interaction takes place and it gives m helix and when they use a solvent in this system then they found that when donor co-solvent is there then this molecule this cation is surrounded by this solvent and helicity changes then this M helix is converted into the P helix. That means this cation with this co solvent or donor's co solvent found that it interacts with this oxygen and this oxygen. But in this case, this cation it interacts with oxygen and this pi system, which is the uh, electron rich system, it interacts with this cation and makes M helix and here P helix. Again, they found that one can change this chirality of helicity from M to P by using the barium dipositive or calcium dipositive. That means when they use this dicatonic molecule, they found that dicatonic metal, they found that here this dicaton, it makes again interaction with this oxygen as well as this oxygen instead of this pi system and here P helix they obtain. That means having a single molecule, one can change helicity from M helix to P helix by changing cation or by introducing donor co-solvent, again, one can change helicity from M helix to the P helix. Now, such system is used to have a memory system. If we remember things in our memory like this, whether such systems may remember things or helicity can be remembered by the polymer. In this molecule, if we look this polymer, here X is carboxylic acid, or X is this phosphonic one, or X is this sulfonic one. And there is no chiral center is present. And we know that carboxylic acid or this phosphonic or this sulfonic, they interact with chiral amines or amines. And what they did, they put at beginning chiral amine in the polymer. They found that this polymer undergoes or gives helical system like this here by interacting this chiral amine either with 433 a or B or again 435. But what they did, they put DMSO and acid, they found that again these chirality changes and one can get the starting material or starting polymer without helicity. That means one can induce helicity by choosing the specific chirality and get such chiral assembly. Again, get the chiral polymer by using DMSO. What happens in DMSO? This hydrogen bonding it breaks. Our, if we go for higher temperatures, also this hydrogen bonding breaks, and one can get the chiral, this starting compound back. Further, what they did, they added a chiral amine, and they found that this a chiral amine, when replaces this chiral amine, then on this helical self-assembled polymer, here a chiral amine is present. Though this chiral amine is goes away from this system, they found that chirality remains as it is. That means this or this polymer, it memorizes its chirality, though it contains a chiral amines. That means like human being, we try to memorize yesterday's thing, day before yesterday's thing. Like this, this polymer also remains or it has some memory of its previous stage, that is chirality. And though a chiral amine is present in this system, it shows memory properties. If we look another example, this is again optically inactive polymer in presence of chiral amine in water, they found that this optically 
inactive polymer it gives such type of chiral uh, assembly or chiral polymer further upon removal of this chiral i mean they found that though they remove this chiral and here a chiral i mean is also not present but helicity remains as it is that means memory of chirality in this polymer remains for longer time that means such type of effect is called as memory peak in chirality now if we look this polymer here in this polymer this is acid phosphonic acid or sulfonic acid here again acid here what they did they changed this end acid end with this amide coupling and having a chiral center they found that for, for 462 that means r1 ic3 h7 that means this one r2 is h that means carbolic acid they found that such type of chiral helical assembly whereas in second case when this is ester then also it has a helical assembly now the polymer with this macromolecule that is cyclohexene our researchers they use cyclohexene as a catalyst for transformation or organic transformation they found that when this x is conh that means here is the amide functional group it gives such type of rope type of assembly when this conh is replaced by coo ester then they found such dimer type of group here it has more than dimer that means depending on this again the amide as well as ester ester bonding the helicity changes in this case this chizophilan it is chiral macromolecule and when such compound they introduced in this chizophilan they found that the, it has helicity and these monomers goes inside this helical assembly and when they photomediated polymerization they did here this triple bond undergoes polymerization under specific light and here upon irradiation of light when it undergoes polymerization such type of polymers was observed obtained and it is again helical one that means one component is not helical or optically inactive and the host is optically active then also one can produce optically polymer or optically active polymer from optically inactive monomer by using such type of host or polymeric host if we look this molecule macro molecule polyethylene having a head group again there is no cationic anionic or zeta-ionic head group it is neutral head group but it is water soluble such type of polymer undergoes dimerization and such type of dimer formation takes place when it undergoes such type of dimerization at that time it undergoes amide hydrogen bonding or intermolecular hydrogen bonding and here again it is water soluble it gives the helical assembly this type of helical assembly one can get from such type of molecule or macro molecules in water again they change here sugars d glucose d mannose d galactose d l mannose again and they found that different type of self assembled material from a simple molecule if we look this molecule here in this case only by changing radical generation one can get different type of self assembled helical material and here if we look this molecule it has glutamic acid as a head group and here again amide hydrogen bonding or amide functional group is present which undergoes hydrogen bonding at the same time it makes system helical as well as water soluble and this molecule undergoes pi pi stacking and when they made these people made this molecule to have self assembly it undergoes such type of self assembly but what they found upon irradiation of light it emits light or left handed cpl light circularly polarized luminescence when we excite the molecule by using a uv light then it undergoes excitation singlet state and from the, then when it comes to the down at the ground state it emits light that is fluorescence but when it emits circularly polarized light, light then it is called as cpl and in this case when they make or they convert this molecule into its radical form they found that it gives such type of different type of light again this is a cpl but in a reverse direction this one that means one can generate cpl or circularly polarized fluorescence from a single molecule by changing its radical or by converting it into the radical to the left cpl as well as right cpl what the same group did they published this in chemistry letter 2019 they used the same molecule and here in this case what they did they used the same molecule and they 
find out or they try to get a self assembled material at the beginning this molecule in methanol it gives such type of nano seeds and upon addition of pap this nano seed is converted into such type of bamboo like uh, structures and again it emits light cpl or it is giving a uh, luminescence with the uh, chirality that means simple molecule again having a nano seeds or from nano seeds they convert into the bamboo like structures and from there it emits the light here if we look these structures these are the nano structures from those molecules and here depending on the quantity of tap here they use in d if we look this d here they use 0.02 molar tap further they increase its concentration 0.1 and further 0.8 molar that means this is converted into the real bamboo like structure from here to here and finally they tap after 5 minutes how it converts into, into the bamboo like structure 5 minutes 6 hours and 24 hours that means the self assembled material after 24 hours it gives a type of bamboo like material and again they characterize this system by using again the xrd fluorescence and here again uv spectroscopy and they present how this bamboo like structure formation takes place from a molecule sheet like and how this sheet is converted into the bamboo like nano architecture what they further did now just now recently it was uh, this nobel prize was awarded to the quantum dots uh, what they did they used this nanotube in presence of different quantum dots and they tried to emit cpl uh, with the different color here, this bamboo, when they use with this quantum dot, different quantum dot, if they use green quantum dot, here this quantum dot or green quantum dot, they generated from CDSE, ZNS quantum dot, dot, and they doped with this one, and they found that this green type of helical or bamboo-like assembly with green color in presence of this quantum dot. The same bamboo-like structures in presence of this yellow quantum dot, here, they generated this yellow quantum dot based on again CDSE, ZNS. That means again, how they prepared this quantum dot, depending on that, its color changes. And they found that this bamboo-like nanostructure, it forms such type of assembly or bamboo-like assembly with yellow CPL. That means again, the fluorescence which they generated is yellow one, here is green one. They changed this quantum dot to the red quantum dot and they found that here, this bamboo-like structure in presence of this red quantum dot, it forms again bamboo-like structures with these covers of the quantum dots and again it emits the red light. That means a simple molecule by changing its radical generation, one can get again the CPL, different type of CPL green, green to red, whereas by using different type of quantum dots or different type of colored quantum dots, they generate this is a colored CPL material, which is useful for the display applications. Now, I would like to con come to this again, the future of, what is the future of supramolecular chemistry? That means here, Sir Professor J. Fraser Stoddard, who won the Nobel Prize in 2016, he talked about this supramolecular chemistry. This chemistry, it took less than half century to make a revolutionary transition from molecule to the supramolecule. Earlier, before 50 years, we know that one can synthesize molecule, total synthesis, complex molecule, or natural. One can get natural molecules and design the retrosynthetic way, final total synthesis. Like this, we were working, but this supramolecular chemistry comes from molecule to the supramolecules. It takes less than 60, 50 years. And the first example was put forth by Charles Peterson, paper on Crown Ether in Jax, 1967. This field was grown by Professor Donald Graham and Jean Mary Lane, who all these three people, they won the Nobel Prize in 1987 for their work in supramolecular chemistry. And the, the supramolecular chemistry further used for molecular motors or functional material by Fraser Stoddard. They won the Nobel Prize in combination with other two scientists. One is from Netherlands and one is from France. And what he concludes, Stoddard says about this branch of supramolecular chemistry in future. This chemistry, look, he says, we have passed the stage of infant mewling and fucking in its mother's arms. That means a small baby 
which is in mother's arm now it comes become now a school boy and it has to next 10 years should go to learn more and more things by like school boy that means this supramolecular chemistry is now come from mother's arm to the uh, uh, ground and it has to be go further to learn more and more things but finally he says it had been the structures robust and resilient in time yet open minded adventuresome and ambitious in spirit that means here his 35 years work he put together here how supramolecular chemistry grows and then he put his picture this picture these are the grand grandchildren of professor stoddard and he says now supramolecular chemistry comes from a uh, mother's hand to ground and now it has to walk like this at the sea shore like and there is the sea in future for supramolecular chemistry now i would like to come to conclude here if we look arjuna in mahabharata his focus is on this i in here and he make here or uh, he targets here at fish now in today's run this is we have to say as arjun because his focus is like this and he won this one that means the gold medal in tokyo olympic that means those students here joined their focus should be like arjuna or like this guy who won this Uh, took you olympic like as you know own the dropadi now i would like to come here this is the beautiful campus of our institute and finally science for humanity science for this peaceful life of human and that's our nation said says anibut asla <coughs> thank you thank you very much thank you sir, sir for thank you sir for giving a very nice lecture nice talk by you really your knowledge your information and your talk is really beneficial for us sir you have given a lecture on this supramolecular helical system what kind of the changes and what kind of the work they can be done they in the future you have given the detailed information regarding this sir you have given this uh, helical assemblies of small molecules head groups hydrogen bond assisted helical assemblies similarly you have given helical polymer and biological macro molecules currently inversion in the helical polymer assembly Uh, so focus on memory effect in the helical polymer assembly cyclodextrin helical system similarly polymerization in the helical cavity sir your guidance is definitely beneficial for the new budding researchers so on behalf of this art commerce and science college uh, i am very much thankful to you sir thank you sir thank you now uh, another resource person is uh, at the part trying to start his lecture i request our principal dr gopal kakre sir to give his presidential address before to start uh, before to uh, deliver the talk of the another resource person dr khot sir hello a very cool afternoon to all i at the very outset welcome all the participants who are joined all over india and special thanks to our resource person my best friend professor dr siddhanath bosle who has joined from csir iict hyderabad who is also a senior principal scientist in iict hyderabad <clears throat> so before we here professor dr kishor kumar khot i am 
here presenting my presidential talk before you friends as we have heard professor dr sidhunath bosli sir about the supramolecules helical system and their applications and after long period we are here joined online and we have we are we have to suppose we have to join offline but due to exam should we have organized this online platform for the discussion on future of chemical sciences and researches friends as dr m n gaikwad sir our principal has introduced the title and our motto behind organizing this webinar entitled future of chemical sciences and research on behalf of my institute after completing the fourth cycle of nac we have secured a grade uh, our office holders honorable president prakash dada solanke honorable general secretary satish bahu chavan sir always motivates us for such events and from their motivation we have organized this online webinar so as dr professor dr sidhanath bosle sir in his talk presented the supramolecules and their helical structures with their applications definitely i am hopeful and i am also clear that our future chemistry is definitely great and we will achieve a good position in the field of chemistry in future as we are replacing the synthetic and hazardous chemicals by the safer and also useful tools the chemistry it reveals that we are having the applications in medicines also in applications in uh, pesticides applications in fertilizers applications in safer foods applications in biodegradable polymers just now uh, professor dr sidhanath bosle sir in in their slide and in their uh, in his research showed that uh, the biodegradable polymers their applications and the future uh, polymers uh, how they are developed and how they are applicable and as we know that this chemistry plays an important role in since uh, ancient times as in various pandemics also it has helped Uh, to the human beings uh, and we have seen the last pandemic and uh, where we have uh, the more applications from chemical sciences which saved uh, lives of uh, thousand and lakhs of peoples and we know that to live safe we require safer food which has less hazards or which has no hazards so it requires uh, uh, safer fertilizers that may be organic fertilizers also uh, safe for pesticide that that may be uh, uh, natural pesticides so it also requires the uh, help of chemistry to process these pesticides or to process these fertilizers and to continue the sustainable chemistry we require all the researchers of uh, uh, chemistry to be strengthened in all types of uh, fields to strengthen the uh, chemistry to st strengthen the human beings so with this i conclude my presidential talk and i also welcome the next resource person uh, who is professor dr kishore kumar uh, we khot from department of chemistry university of uh, shivaji university kolapur so i also welcome on behalf of my college my staff and also the honorable office holders to, uh, to be in this online platform thank you sir 
Thank you. Thank you, sir. Uh, before to start, Professor Dr. Hoth, sir, who is a resource person of this webinar. Before to start his lecture, I introduce Professor Dr. Kishore Kumar Hoth, sir, who is working as a Professor at Shivaji University, Kolapur. He has awarded PhD degree in 2016. He completed postdoctoral in 2016 at South Korea. He has got meritorious scholarship in 2012. He has also got best research, best teacher award. Thanks to all. Have a nice time. <laughs> One minute. He also yeah. received Young Scientist Conference Award. <laughs> Participants are requested to mute their voice. <laughs> Akash Kumar. Akash Kumar, please mute your voice. He is a peer reviewer of Royal Society of the Chemistry, Elsewhere, Springer, and Valley. He worked as an editorial, editorial board as well as advisory board member of the scientific journals and its number is 11 journals. His research achievement is very great. He has published 70 research papers in various reputed journals. He also published 54 research papers in proceedings and his H index is 21. He also published research papers in refereed journals and its number is 49. So with this brief introduction, I request Professor Dr. Kishore Kumar Khotsar to deliver a lecture and the title of the talk is Research Methodology. Professor Dr. Kishore Kumar Khot, sir, please preside over. Am I audible? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes. Okay. Thank you, sir, for your uh, very nice introduction. And first of all, I would like to thank all the organization for inviting me for a, such a nice webinar based on the future of chemical science. But if you look at my subject and uh, you were planned webinar is quite different, no doubt, uh, because we are in this webinar, uh, many of are expecting and talking about the what futures have been in chemical science and with respect to chemistry. No doubt I'm from also chemistry as well, but uh, if you look at the problems associated with the research and how to define the research is quite difficult task to us or we are unable to understand it so that uh, I used to share the something related to the research methodology. So in this my presentation I am not talking about the what research I have done. No doubt in short at the last I will talk within five minutes the what research we are doing in the our laboratories or what research they put forth on the topmost in material science to us. So basically we are working in a material science and the synthesis of uh, smart materials by developing thin hey. film nanotechnology. So I once again thanks to all the organizations for the giving an opportunity to talk in front of you all. So my uh, presentation is visible to all. My presentation is visible to everyone. 
Yes, sir. Yes, yes, sir. Yes, sir. It is okay. visible, sir. Yes, okay. So basically, as I mentioned that uh, I am talking about or sharing some of my ideas and views uh, related to the research methodology because it is very important to understand what is meant by research and how one can define the research problem and based on that research problem, how we can conclude with the research problem and we'll achieve our aim and that there then we are going to publish the paper. Nowadays, very uh, fancy uh, passion is there to publish the paper. Uh, the students are easily publishing many papers because of they have many options, paid journal, unpaid journal, peer review, without peer review. But as far as my knowledge and experience, what I learned from my seniors and my respected PhD guide, Professor P. N. Bosley from Department of Chemistry, Shivaji University, Kolhapur, as well as Pro Vice Chancellor Professor P. S. Patil from Shivaji University, Kolhapur, that we should be very uh, adaptable with the things are needed for the current society or current uh, what we can say the industrial sector. So basically. In the research, the first and uh, most important thing is that to uh, understand what is meant by research. So I will just go with some of my important points in my today's presentation related to the research and why we should go for the research. I think some of students have been joined for the lecture, so they will be benefited a lot from this my presentation as well. Because uh, all of are interested to move for the research, but they didn't understand why we go for the research. And they only consider the benefits in the form of money or in the form of profession or progression in the profession of the research, personal, as well as in the educational sector. But research is not this kind of work. Research is a passionate work, in which we have to go from some motivations and some criteria and there are many problems related to the start and to conclude the research. So today's uh, lecture, I'm going to talk about this on motivation and innovations. Uh, what are the process and basic two types of research we can consider as far as my knowledge and how uh, we can write the paper so that the possibility of publication or to accept the paper in a quality or uh, reputed reviewers by obviously recognized journal and there are many problems till we are facing due to lack of facilities and availability we can say the infrastructure because of uh, very less awareness related to the research so it is very common thing in this slide one that is what is meant by research so basically the name itself indicates research is simply nothing but we are preferring or we are, uh, we can say, uh, refer to search the knowledge, whatever has been already searched by someone or the uh, other researchers. Therefore, we can say it is the art of scientific investment. And it is obviously systematic search where we are dealing about the how uh, we can move with the some important things and we are moving from known to unknown things so that we can understand what known things we have with us now then we are going to understand some unknown or innovative or novel things and this is simply called as a research so obviously it deals with the we how to go for the, the review literature survey, collaboration, communication, discussion, guidance. Then we have to go with the analysis, experimentation. In theoretical, we have to go for the exotic review. And then we have to go for the some data, interpretation, analysis, referencing. And last, we can publish the paper so that we can get rewards or fame in the field of research. So, if you go on for the research, so you should have a question in your mind that why we should go for the research. Obviously, there are many things related to the research. Why we have to move for the research and why we should start the research. Basically, there are many ways. 
or many benefits we are getting at the end of the when we are moving when we are boosting with the research based on our interest let's consider there are many interesting uh, let's say intrinsic motivations are there like by motivating or it includes or it means of interest if you are thinking in the point of view of research interest automatically creates and as you feel the there is scope or room for our interest there is a challenge to tackle it and during tackling or accepting the challenge we need to learn some things or we need to learn some important terminologies and if you learn these terminologies obviously it results into creative performance and at the end you will get the novelties at the end you will get some innovation from known to unknown and this is called as the motivation of research in the form of intrinsic motivation obviously there are in many other things of extrinsic why extrinsic it is called as because if you are doing interesting challenging learning and creative performance in the research automatically it results into the awards fames and it results obviously another side you have to consider punishment for bad work or poor research work is also there in extrinsic research motivation so opportunities will be increased obviously you will get lots of options lots of ways to go for the further career improvement so that the extrinsic motivation of research will be you lots of uh, input to your careers input to your careers then the personal obviously if you are doing the research with respect to current need of society or the where there is a room or what the problem associated with the previously research done by scientists or researchers and if you tackle that or if you are moving with that way or that point of view obviously it results into getting the value to your knowledge value to your research and that results into the public recognition and it at the end getting the some pleasure in our personality and obviously it will be results into improve the knowledge of your own personality then interpersonal we can say obviously if you are doing uh, excellent research work or if you are in a properly current doing research work collaboration increases a research we need commitment need collaboration and if you have a good collaboration and commitment at results into you will get the encouragement due to competition so i think this is what the thing i want to share with you that why we need we need to go for the research based on this some basic things i used to percolate in single slide that from intrinsic to the interpersonal motivation we get from the research we get from the research next i want to share that a very simple thing that the types of research many of thinking that the research are n number of ways or methods available to go for the research no doubt but the basically the research is divided into two types that is applied and fundamental applied is deals with the experimental thing and we are doing with the practically to provide the problem solution to the society or we can consider to any innovative thing that will be directly related to the society or we are trying to minimize miniaturize or we can trying to tackle or we can trying to nullify what problem has been associated by previous researcher to solve the current ongoing society issues or problem is called as applied research let's take one example that we are improving we are doing here in the energy efficient material we are trying to develop such a material no doubt we are not getting con more conversion efficiency but we are using low cost earth abundant non toxic metals and from that we 
can provide some prototype in front of society or industry so that they can prepare our materials and they can improve or minimize the cost and improve the efficiency of conversion without disturbing to the environment and living organism from bacteria to the human life. So this is what the, we can say one achievement we can consider in our webinar that the future of chemical science, the future is chemical science that we have to think about the green chemistry. Means if you are using very high cost instrumentation and sophisticated technology, sophisticated laboratories, high cost chemicals and solvents, it results into the creating lots of uh, hazardous waste material which are not good for the environment and which are not good for the living organisms so that it results into creating future issues or problem in coming future with respect to chemical science. So this is a one kind of research like applied and another is a fundamental where they are not doing any innovation or novelty. They are not inventing something. They are doing or they are working to expand or to improve the quality of the knowledge what they have known previously. So based on that, the student can motivate by considering their fundamental work is called as fundamental research. For example, we can talk about the reactivity or working mechanism of proton, neutron, electron in a molecule based on that we can apply this fundamental knowledge as a base of applied research. So these are the two important types of research and we can from that consider based on our interest we can go for fundamental or we can say theoretical literature based and we can go for the applied or practical based type of research and obviously if you are moving with the practical oriented applied research you will get the lots of motivation due to its uh, encouragement collaboration boost of knowledge and that results into fame awards recognition and automatically you will get the boost of your confidence at the end of such kind of research when we are moving for our future career. So this is what related to the introduction of research and the basic uh, types of research. So the most important thing is related to how we have to carry out the research. So this is a very, we can say a very problematic and big question in front of lots of researchers that how we have to start and where we have to stop and which we have to use and which way is non-toxic, which way is cost effective and from which way or method we have used based on that we can apply our knowledge in our interested area is most important. The first thing to define the research problem. If you think about to move for the research or PhD, postdoctorate, or very simple thing I will tell you, a research project, you have to think in the point of view of a research. Means uh, defining of research problem means, what is mean by research problem? We have to think practically, either it is theoretical or practical situation, or we can, or we cannot achieve or we can achieve very easily or in which way we can move for the research to conclude or to overcome what we are expecting or what we are defining the aim of to define the research problem. Means in a research problem, I simply one can say that we have to concern with the research kind. Therefore, whenever we are thinking or talking about the research, the first element, we can say it's not element, it's a nucleus which plays a very important role in your life with respect to research is uh, your research guy. Who can help you? Who can lighten in your interest with respect to 
research need by a research quantity means in the first point i clearly mentioned that we have to concern no doubt with respect to uh, your research interest and that is called as your research guide or research mentor and in that we have to move with by own by some identification or we can say by uh, we can say identify or to determine the limitations of earlier research problem in your interested area in your interested area in that we have to check whether what the issues we are having or the previous researchers have found and they are unable to go over it and they haven't achieved what they have planned or what we are currently expecting to avoid the need of excess of energy how we can avoid or how we can tackle by providing cost effective by using earth abundant by applying non toxic chemicals this is the future of chemical science that we have to think in the point of view of a green chemistry then and then only we can survive in coming 25 years otherwise we are unable to uh, stand on our foot in the field of education of education so we these things we need to consider during defining of a research problem and the most important thing whenever we are uh, we can say the defining the research problem we have to review the we can say exotic review of literature surveys required in the field of uh, research means the literature survey plays a very important role in our defining of research problem or to go for let's say extensive literature survey we need to go for the a quite important tabulated plan by referring quality best research paper we have to what kind of research papers we are referring is very important because the good library is also one kind of a mentor one kind of research guide in your research in your research then development of working hypothesis once you have enough literature survey you have defined the research problem and then you have to prepare your road map is simply nothing but the formation or development of working hypothesis in this task we have to think about the available sources available guidance available collaboration available facilities and the time management we how to think in the development of a working hypothesis so that you can cover at your are least in a uh, we say in unaffected ways unaffected why we are using this word unaffected because if you are doing some research and we are making pollution in the form of water in the form of air is quite unacceptable in the coming days because if you go on for the publication of research they are taking undertaken based on what things or toxicity or the end product containing whatever impurities are non toxic or how much toxicity they have means we have to think about the nature surrounding and environment then and only we can develop working hypothesis and based on that working hypothesis we have to go for the experimental if you are doing with the applied research and if you are talking about the fundamental research we have to review let's consider in the form of tabulated reaction graphical or let's say diagrammatic manner so that you can differentiate you can easily explain about how research is designed and how we can achieve to our aim we can achieve to our aim then once we have started with the some important things with respect to our road map obviously the collection of data 
which kind of instrument which method which technique have been used for preparation let's say synthesis for formation for development and characterization is prime theme in the collection of data whether you are using uh, authorized characterization technique or not or it is a manual or atomized and we have to maximum use the computerized not computerized it's a instrumental data without disturbing let's say very uh, common word manipulated data is not accepted nowadays therefore uh, if we are using such a way it is called as not good criteria of a current research this nowadays lots of smart techniques are available to do the research in a short period of time but nowadays if you think or talk or uh, inside about another side there are many methods or way available to understand whether synthesized or the press, what we can say the published or submitted work is we can say genuine or not means it should be worth the pull to accept and it is a one kind of framework to the budding researcher so as a ethics of research during collection of data we how to how to have these things in our back side of our mind so that we can collect data and we have to go for analysis by referring we can say the previously research work so that you will get some good references and based on that you can come to your own conclusion we can say it's a innovation or novelty we can say innovation or novelty then the most important based on the references or the what data we have by previous researcher or published by previous researcher we have to interpret and report the data is simply nothing but the publication of a research work so basically before we can conclude our research work in the form of uh, we can say the report or the project work or a paper we how to think in a such a way that in which journal we are aiming and before we can finalize the journal we how to go for the what the journal aim and scope what kind of work they can accepting or they can required to publish in their respective issues or their uh, we can say the journal publication so in that we have to go from the abstract introduction result discussion and conclusion i'm not talking about this more about the writing of research paper but we'll go how to draft the uh, we can say a rough draft of research paper very easily that first we have to go for the thin capacity means in the research as far as my knowledge we should be have a multi dimensional view we should be think in all angles not by our own one way direction in research we should have lots of or many brainstorming we can say communicative the section should be organized or based on that section you will get lots of inputs from other researcher based on their experience their expertise and most important their knowledge means if you go on from the uh, selection of research work to the uh, we can say the interpretation and data analysis and then you have prepared the very nice draft of research work and you have prepared the paper and going to submit to the journal is a wrong way or wrong method before we can abstract to the any one journal let's say a national conference we have to talk we have to discuss we have to have some brainstorming session with your colleague of interested let's say you were interested area of working people so that they will provide you lots of inputs and based on that input 
he will feel more comfort and comfort is nothing but in encouragement with respect to what you are going to claiming in front of others so this is nothing but the drafting of data and drafting is not uh, we can say one way it's a reversible process in which we have to go for the writing by taking feedbacks again rewriting and we have to clear clarify what unknown things we are making the known to the in front of the worldwide researchers I means the publication of research is not a simple task keep in your mind so we are publishing paper very easily but we are unable to answer the questions of each and every sense and there is no use of such a research in coming future because if you look at the policies currently i am working in uh, royal society of chemistry acs springer willy journals they are providing lots of training session to us how to review how to take the journal or the paper for the review process other and other, then and then only for getting the positive response from the instrument then and then only you can move forward otherwise you have to take the opinion from a senior editors or the senior management of that journal and they are of like nobel laureate or the most senior scientists who are having abundant of knowledge and experience means nowadays publication of research is quite difficult and other way it is quite simple if we are moving like this if we are moving like this then we have to move with the revision many time and in a research is an a continuous process where we have to repeat rewrite get feedback and again rewrite for to clarify our thing with respect to scientific language here is another language we are talking about the hindi english marathi many language but the science has its own language keep in your mind scientific language is the most important in sir, when sir, we sir, are sir, 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 sir,